All right. It is currently 17th of April, and mm -hmm. we're going to start a live stream. If you want to join these kind of meetings, you can go to the school group. Links in the description. So it's time to do some uh, some analysis. Current DXY, we are in an interesting position. That's because we are currently inside the day deployment balance. We had a little reaction from there. But now we are still inside yesterday's range. And yesterday's range, I mean yesterday's high and yesterday's low. So we're still in between them. So I'm not I'm not executed on any trade yet today. I am still in an NCD cat long. Still has some room for growth, but the only thing we need to be aware of is that we are currently fighting a daily SIBI. And you see it's kind of reacting from the top of the uh, CB. So if this doesn't hold, then I'm going to take off the trade. And that's okay, because then we'll just get a internal to external move from the internal range security to the low and the low stop loss. So if I anticipate that move after this is not respected, then uh, I will take it off. That's for, uh, for them. Welcome, Alejandro. Nice that you are here. Um, if you have any questions or you want some pairs to look at, just drop them in the chat. So we have DXY still doing DXY things. Uh, we have a red folder uh, tomorrow. And what I see for DXY right now is we have this failure swing here. And we are creating here also some failure swings. So I think we can get an aggressive move downwards when the down move comes. And there will be higher prices for DXY. But yeah, don't fade that we are in a hyper bullish environment for DXY. And currently we have the daily busy and we have the daily high waiting here. So yeah, we're on a kind of tricky situation. So uh, my money is that we're going short term lower for the USD pairs. So let's see. Uh, how it is. Welcome, Brian. Welcome, Mohammed. So, that's why I'm kind of flat. Um, indices, very interesting today. So, I was doing some analysis in the London session today, and we took out yesterday's low, and then we just stepped, stepped upwards, 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 but not with very nice price action, so I didn't execute. Uh, bias on the indices is very clear. I want to see, uh, and it's still a bullet trader, I think I'm going to discuss right now. You want to nest 100, is it? Is it? So clear bias is this, daily busy i want the price to come to there and currently we are inside a volume imbalance i made it less green but we're inside a volume imbalance look at here so i would say we are currently moving from a external range liquidity we took out this this low towards internal range liquidity towards the daily busy and from there of course you have two choices or not two choice but two outcomes the daily busy does does hold, excuse me, and goes lower, or the busy gets ran through and we get we're going higher. My money is on if we can get going lower because of the displacement, something like this. So, short term bias is um, trading towards the, uh, the CB, that's the yellow area. I'm going to make this less green. So what would be very nice to see for today is 
some thread like this. Take out liquidity here. Or, and that's what I'm kind of hoping for if you go to look at SMTs, because if we go look at, no, it's not, it's, let's go to ES. Like talking about SMTs, we are currently inside the volume imbalance on NQ, but the volume imbalance from ES is not traded into yet. What would be very nice is if we get a move to here like that. So it, it's it's just waiting. It's a waiting game. I'm waiting for the open. Probably we're going to see one and one sided move at the open, and then we will continue from uh, from there. Uh, SPY, yeah. So we're discussing uh, SP right now. So this morning was very clear. We took out yesterday's low, and then moved upwards. Um, market didn't give a nice entry it's going to one minute i mainly trade es or i mainly trade nq so um what happened here let's mark out pd race we had a value gap here that didn't get respected didn't get trade into then if we move upwards order block gets respected and this value gap could be your entry a few times to enter and then your tp will be all these filler swings right here so um if you're going to look at the part two of the daily bias video on the 2024 mentorship this is a clear bias you can have for the day so part one you see the higher time frame bias and that would look like this like you have a daily sibi has drawn liquidity so that means on the lower time frame so for example on the five minute or one minute what you basically want to see if you are anticipating a bullish day you want asia to accumulate london to manipulate and then also making the low of the day in london and then distribute higher that's what you want to see and to copy paste this that's not very nice but we accumulate in asia then we manipulate in london taking out yesterday's low this manipulation lag and then we distribute probably today towards the daily cv and then you have your amd and amd is, is nice when you have higher time frame narrative to trade from So we had both very nice drawn liquidity here. Short term already took it out. So now I'm flat. We had some guys in the school group who uh, who took the trade. Some guys who took the entry on NQ. It's the bread and butter setup, the school setup. I was sharing in the in the classroom in the 2024 mentorship. Took out daily low. What you then want to do is wait for market structure shift happened here entry in the here value gap and then you target the opposing one hour for value gap for and external to internal so where was the next for value gap it was here let's mark it out as a one one hour go back to the one minute so your setup would look like this Entry start the value gap below the low or below this low, and target the value gap. You give a one to one to one four, but you should have your stop loss below here or really low. But whatever you want to target, I would like to target the one to two, one to three. This is your school setup. This is this is school setup you can focus on if you're not profitable on the scalping way. This is what I look for every day. Just classic AMD. So you know your higher time frame bias. It is the daily city. They're going to look for a AMD power of three on the lower time frames, accumulation, manipulation, and then your school setup right here to target the opposing one hour array. And if you're very confident, you could even target these highs because this was a very clear buy side liquidity pool. 
and then you could have a very safe trade below this below the low here one to three and i think you already got it yeah right here my voice is a little cranky today i recorded some videos for the 2024 mentorship so uh, i apologize for that so uh, folks on the school setup again it's here every day if you look for the pair who does it and we are approaching 9 a.m so for now I'm, I'm kind of flat look at what price did right here not much Let's see what DXY is doing. Well, if DXY wants to go lower, it wants to do it from this five minutes or value gap. So what you could see for New York session, because this is not very nice price action. So my guess is that we will see a move to the one hour value gap then your 2022 mentorship to here and eventually to the daily busy that's where my money is on um like again like i always say i don't have my crystal ball so um it's mainly you need to frame trades uh, trade ideas so if you if you see this you're taking a long setup on the uc pairs and at the same time if if it doesn't go the way and it goes to and through taking out all these highs then you should look and okay this is not going to hold so probably next target is going to be this high then you need to frame shorts for the usd pairs so be flexible have both trade ideas in your mind um when you have like a clear short or clear long id in your head it's easier now i'm kind of 50 50 but the my money is on on this move right welcome guys in the chat you guys joined i see scooby is here moments here welcome silly welcome alex happy to have you guys here uh, also in the school group i saw some amazing trades and the cool part is about sharing your trades is um, when you have a kind of system developed for yourself like i want to see xyz on the chart and you can share it in the group and then people every trader looks to the chart differently I do, you do, everyone here does. And the cool part is that uh, you can get di different ideas, different concepts. You can talk to each other about it. You can uh, uh, you can improve together. And that's the, the main uh, goal for the, for the group. Uh, Mohammed, you ask, look at Paris. Let me know which Paris, uh, Mohammed. I can go uh, through all the Paris, do a little analysis if you like that. So um, Euro is still in, also just like DXY, still inside yesterday's range. My money is on, like, again, my money is on short for DXY. That means longs for Euro USD. But if you go to the five minute, yeah, this could be a, did we make equal highs or did we take out liquidity? Well, these highs are going to be ran, I'm sure. But that's the question from which point? So I think the daily city is to draw liquidity for the euro pairs. And let's go to GU. GU kind of the same, but you already took out. Yesterday's high, but we all also have the daily city waiting and also the lows here. So we're in between that. And the highest probability trades, you guys, are these like trading into a busy and then on the five minutes it goes lower making 2022 mentorship and then go to the to the low from internal to external those are the high probability trades and currently you don't have that so i can frame cool trades and do some cool magic but on the high time frame you want to you want to have that um how do you say that that your sales are on on the good side of the wind or that you you just want to have the higher time frame with you it's just easier Uh, then look at AU. We're still inside that market maker cell model. So I'm sure 
these, these loads are going to be ran because we need to go to that original consolidation, that green area does this. Right here. So these lows are going to be ran, but the question is how and when will these uh, these lows uh, deliver? And now, what you see, we don't do anything. We are accumulating or consolidating, how you want to call it. So you don't trade in accumulation. And yes, you can say, okay, liquidity grab market structure shift for value gap here and then upwards but i don't i don't buy that i don't buy it i don't, I don't trust it then ntd usd that's the one that i was looking at today because same bias like i said on on euro usd that you have a clear sibi and then trade lower i think we have that here because we already traded into the daily sibi right here But well, the thing is, you have two CBs. We also could trade to this CB. But just looking at, at these daily, daily value gap, let's mark it out as a daily. Then go to the one hour. And the bodies are respecting the one hour here. It's not the, the previous price action, but you see this for value gap is respected. So then I'm looking, okay, can we perhaps trade lower from here? But this price action is okay. But now comes the the uh, tricky part. That's why I haven't, I, I'm not in yet. Is I just said, I am counting on a lower DXY. And when you have a lower DXY, you have a higher NCD USD. So it cannot be that I say to you like, hey, I'm expecting lower DXY. At the same time, I'm going to short NCD USD because those are inverse correlated. So when I'm in between two ideas, I'm just flat. I just, I, I love to watch the market and uh, I see you guys here. So I think you guys are too. And be okay with just not pressing the button yet. And if you see the setup, if you're looking at, at a certain thing to happen in the market, uh, apart from what I'm saying to you and you see your setup, shoot it. Just shoot it. You can do it. Just do it. And I'm, I'm rooting for you. To, to get that win. That's very nice. Currently, I am flat on, uh, on the USD pairs. This is new guys joining as well. Uh, if you're not in the group yet, uh, let me know as well. Also on uh, in the chat, I have some new membership requests pending. I'm going to allow them right now. Uh, sometimes, There are some bots on uh, <laughs> on the on school, so sometimes you get a DM from a random guy. Please report them to me because I will remove them from the group. And if you don't um, if you don't fill in the three questions, the questionnaire from the start, if you don't fill them in, I won't allow you. I will deny your request. So be aware of that. But uh, welcome, uh, Job, Job. Welcome, Josue. Welcome, Michael. And let me know in the chat where you guys are looking at GBP AUD. I haven't had any AUD pairs in my watch list this week, so I'm I've slept on them. I, I know they moved like like amazingly yesterday. <laughs> I heard some trading friends about talking about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This this move up was very nice. So um, okay, what I'm seeing currently, I'm going a little. I have a naked chart. It's nice. I haven't looked at this uh, in a few days. Okay, on a monthly, we have this. I'm just going to mark out some PD arrays. We here have a busy, and we here have a high. But those are far away, right? We're not going to be tr trading intraday, so those are too far away. But it could be a narrative. Go to weekly. Order flow here is kind of bullish. Smart money reversal. Value gap, credit is higher, respecting bullish arrays. 
So I think bullishness on GBP AOD is uh, is deserved. A nice question: How does this look like? So let's let's stick on the daily for now. Here we have this daily busy. It gets respected, and I see a tiny travel gap here as well. Gets respected as well. So you know, okay, buy program. Buy program is in. He already took this swing high, then moved lower. So we could currently have a external to internal move. But looking at this price action, I would say we're going to uh, to run the other highs. But I want to see clear structure. So I don't think this is clear structure. You can frame both both uh, sides. Um, let me check what the hourly. You can put a nice market maker model on the hourly. Yeah. This is very nice. This is what you want to see. You know the market maker models? This is your original, uh, original uh, consolidation. So what you want is that to be taken out. So this is a clear draw on liquidity. Those highs, what I said, are here for the taking. And let's see if we are bullish. What do we respect? We respect the bearish or bullish uh, value gap here. Another one, order block. This looks very clean for longs. Look at this. Like, yeah, I, I knew, like, I, I've got many DMs. Like, hey, look at GPOD and I slept on it. Like, this was uh, from Sunday and Monday. One hour for value cap here. Got respected. Then, for value cap, gets respected. Create an order block. Look at this. Order block gets respected. So, it, when you're in a buy program, you want this kind of range, this kind of range to be respected. Well, this plays up again. What do we see? For value gap, order block, boom, upwards. For value gap, <laughs> this 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 is a very clear mark maker buy model. And you see, if you are on the buy side of the curve, every discount array should hold. So now we have a short term draw. Was this? It's already taken. So now you see after it's taken, you have some. Uh, so I moves to the downside, and, and now you can even frame smart market reversal here. So it, it depends on how price, if price holds this. Otherwise, you can you can see a market maker sell model appearing right here. So a, a market maker model on the one hour is the same as a retracement on the daily. So if I if I say, for example, here, I see a market maker sell model appearing. So that would look like this. Where's your consolidation? It's right here. And look how that looks at the let's let's mark out these lows. Go to the daily. There's this low. Do you think it will happen? I don't think so. But be aware that it can happen. So I would just say like, you can test if you are in a sell program, if PD arrays are going to hold. So do we see an aggressive move below this low with our value gap? If the price trades back into the value gap, does it displace it again, displace away again? That's what you want to see, that you want to, to tackle. So we just had this move already, also an inversion value gap, touched it. So Alex, what, what's your uh, bias on the GBP AOD right now? Are you still uh, on the bullish camp or are you in the bearish camp? Here's a little teaser for the video that's coming up.
uh, next Tuesday. Recorded today, it's about mitigation blocks and how they compare to breakup blocks and when to use them. That's for another, another time. So you see, clear drawn liquidity is going to be the daily busy. Yeah, short term, I agree with you there, Alex, for a bearish GPOD. And that's, that's purely because we just took out that um, that high and displaced away. Now, DXY is just doing a whole lot of nothing. And that's also fine, because if DXY does nothing, you also don't do anything. Let's see how the cat bears are performing. We are a few minutes before a new four hour candle is starting. So what I'm expecting for this pair, I'm, I'm, since yesterday I'm in this trade, I still am in even because the uh, CPI from NCD almost took me out, but uh, still in. I put my stop loss below the for value gap. I shared the daily outlook in the school group, why? So if you have not seen it, check it out. I want to see for this trade to be valid that this referral gap is going to hold. If it doesn't, if it just straight straight through with the next four hour candle that's going to print in four minutes from now, I just want to see this. If it doesn't, I'm taking it off. Let's see what the cat pairs are doing. The cat pairs had some amazing runs. Uh, GP cat, I think. <laughs> that is crazy. Hold on. Like, why would price stop here? It's creating buy side up here. So people bought. And now all those people that were buying, all the people here, all the people here, I think price is going to take them out. Let's see, let's see. So if you look at who is currently in the market, that's a nice game to play. So the people that bought from here, they wrote all the way up, all those people here, so the, these buyers right here all got taken out by this move. But those guys are not in anymore. The buys that are in are the ones that have bought from the guys who are in from here are still in. And the guys who bought again right here. And that's where buy set and sales liquidity pools come in. So what is likely to do next? Like do we have to take out enough people here to just make the move? Based on what price is doing right now, I don't think so, personally. Because if it was price, we would have just taken out the high here, take out the buy side liquidity, take out the money here, and then move it down. So yeah, very curious to see this. It's funny price, actually. So um, what I mainly are trading is market maker buy models, market maker sell models. And if I don't see a clear market maker model, I'm flat. I don't trade it. So for example, here we could have a nice short-term trade from this BC towards here based on this candle. But again, not that convinced yet. Let's look at the JPY pairs. Okay, your JPY is consolidating as well, right here. GP, JPY as well. Look at the buy side equity that has been created here. So 
going to be taken out. You know it. So JPY news. I don't think there, there's any JPY news this week. So probably we will see. I'm currently checking on uh, Forex Factory for next week. Perhaps some, maybe some CPI. We have a bank holiday. JPY. No, with two. That's that's funny. We have two. Uh, oh, I think I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong week. Hold on. <laughs> I'm in the wrong week. Uh, JPY. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week we have for JPY we have the uh, uh, rate rate hike, rate cuts, policy rate. So I think price is going to create all these liquidity pools for next Thursday and then take them out in one big green candle. So flat on JPY for now. Here, so it took out extra liquidity, then went back here. Now we're going up again. See on the weekly, not very clear. Not so flat as well. We're consolidating in this daily busy. And catch APY. Look at this. This is ugly. <laughs> very ugly. So not too much to play with currently. We are 9 a.m. So in 30 minutes we have the open. Um this question from you. Do you have a criteria that you use to settle on the pairs in your watch list or you just pick them randomly? <laughs> no, no, I don't pick them randomly. Uh, what I do is, and you see it on the weekly outlook as well. And on um, Friday, the third part of the daily bias um, series is releasing. And what I basically do is I go to all the pairs. So I have here all the all the pairs I, I'm trading. I could trade and I want to trade. And I'm going over them one by one. And I'm asking myself the questions. What pairs have a clear external range liquidity or inter range liquidity coming up next week plus news? monthly, weekly, and daily. I look at that. If yes, give them a green ticker. If no, leave them alone. So what I do on a, on a every Sunday or every Saturday when I, uh, I'm going to analyze for the week, I'm going, for example, to uh, get JSF. And I'm looking at, OK, Sorry, at the, at the monthly, do I see anything here? So for example, here, we have taken out liquidity, then displaced up, and we currently are creating a value gap on the monthly, but that's not, not created. We need to wait for next month. So for this pair on the weekly, I don't see anything yet. Then let's look here. We might have something coming up when price trades into this weekly for value gap. Because then, if a value gap is internal range liquidity, then you can have a move from internal range, and we just displays upwards a so mark structure shift from here to here. So for next week, I could look at this if I would play this, this, this trade. But for now, there is no. Let's look at the daily. There's nothing here for me to trade on this pair based on just looking at the value gaps and highs and lows. So it's not random, it's based on that. And the pairs that I'm showing in the weekly outlooks every Sunday, those are the pairs that have a clear strong liquidity coming up or a old higher low or a value gap on their higher time frame. And on the higher time frame, I mean daily, weekly, monthly. And currently, the list is quite long. And I think I can remove some pairs as well, who just had some moves and now are just chilling. So um, uh, I think after the stream today, or maybe, maybe tomorrow during Asia, 
I'm going to remove some pairs for the rest of the week. I'm going to do a reanalysis, like, hey, what pairs can be uh, can be good? Uh, but today, if you also have looked at the daily outlook in the school group, today this was my drawn liquidity for the indices, the daily civis. DXY, honestly, my bias is still in the uh, to the daily busy right here, but look at what price does. It's still inside the range. And that's fine as well. Like you don't have a bias then, okay? Just on trade. So the USD pairs are I'm flat for now. I'm waiting for DXY to make it move. Like, do you want to trade this? <laughs> Look at the, this. Those are hourly candles. Nothing to see here. And what I could see is a move from internal range liquidity to external range liquidity on the hourly. But for now, I'm just flat. So yeah, let me know, guys, if you have some pairs you're looking at yourself. And I saw some people who took some, let me check, some gold longs. Let's take a look at gold. Yeah, gold is on hyper, hyper bullish mode, and that's cool. Um, I'm not a gold trader, so I would love to, I'm going to have some guys who are really amazing gold traders. I'm going to contact, um, I just see a high and I see a weekly busy on a daily. I don't see anything on the monthly. It's just, <laughs> it's just one, two, two massive green candles. So, um, yeah, for gold, if you are long here, well done. I think you are doing well. So just consolidate a little bit. But I don't have a bias on gold. I could ask this a lot, but I don't have it. I have no clue what gold is doing, except from going up because there is war, going up because there is an alternative investment needed because of inflation in almost every country. That's why I think gold has some fundamental reason to come up. But when I want to long something, I want to long from a discount array on a higher time frame. So a after perhaps a daily, weekly, or monthly low to be after that's taken, or after a daily, weekly, or monthly fair value gap, they get traded in and then take a long from there. But if that's not here, I'm not touching it. Just like MCD Cat, if you are in right here, somewhere here for shorts, for example, it's, it's a tough, tough love here. It takes a long time. This price action is very nice. So yeah, just waiting. I'm going to check the school group as well. See if I can find some nice trades. Yeah, I see nice activity in the training camp. That's where it's it's needed. See people ask for reviews. Perfect. Let's perfect grow together.
And this is the less sexy side of trading, guys. The waiting game. DXY is going up right now. Uh, excuse me, DXY is going down right now. So you see the UZ push going up. Which makes sense. Because we have the drawn liquidity there. I think what most traders are not aware of is that on some days you have the urge to trade. You're like, you wake up and you think, oh yes, it's almost London session or almost New York session. I'm ready to trade. I'm ready to press the button. And then you look at the chart. Then you think, oh shit, <laughs> this is not what I want to see. And then you can take a trade and knowing that's low probability and low probability in this, in the sense that you are looking for something that is not there. And then you maybe you take a loss and then you are frustrated that you were excited to trade and now you took a loss and to get the dopamine feeling back, you take another trade and <laughs> you know how the cycle cycle will end. And so you woke up excited about a trade and at the end of the day or the end of the session maybe, you took three, four, five losses, perhaps blew the account, blow the daily drawdown on a challenge. And then you were less excited to trade. And then you were like, oh shit, why did I trade today? I, I didn't see anything, but I wanted to trade. And I'm telling you this story because I was like this. So I know exactly how the feeling is. You did your analysis, you did your homework, you 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 suddenly chart, you, you back tested for hours. And then you're going to force your will on the market and lose. It sucks. Trading is, is boring in that sense. If it's not here, it's not here. Period. And if it is here, it is here. That's also good. And why do I think that DXY is going upwards? You remember market maker buy model? That's what I'm looking for. Original consolidation is right here. We need to complete it. Spark one universal, accumulation one, accumulation two, boom up. This is your end, this is the end game. And the question is, will it go down to the daily CV or down to this, excuse me, this C or this BC, and then go up? Or it's just going to straight up, you don't know that. And that's just educated guessing. And I think personally, we're going to take out some sellers before we're going to make that move to complete the market maker model. And perhaps uh, we're not going to do it anytime soon. We, you don't know. Uh, in the chat, uh, my ma major problem is uh, scared of holding my trades or scared of entering my A setups. Uh, okay. And can you maybe uh, think about why you are, are you scared to lose? Or are you scared that the setup won't work? Or are you risking too much for a trade? Can you, can you perhaps describe that destiny in the, in the chat? Because uh, um, behind the word scared, there's an emotion that has so many different levels. It is best to, to focus on that word and look, okay, what is for me? What's behind that? And I'm waiting on your message, Destiny. So I'm going to fill the, fill the time with my own story. Uh, I was afraid to lose. That was my main uh, main obstacle and the only way you can overcome the fear of losing 
is losing. <laughs> Strange, right? So what happened was someone told me, like, hey, you have an edge, right? You have an edge, and for example, that edge is you have a strike rate of uh, 40%. And a strike rate of 40% means that you take 10 trades and four of them are winners and 10 of them are losers. So for the people that are like to like the visual people, example, your edge is 40%. That means 10 trades, four win, six losses, right? An edge of 40% is totally normal. Why? If you have if you're shooting for for one to three R, then your wins will be well, and your losses will be six. Three to one. So you make six R profit after 10 trades. So a 40% edge is totally normal. Biggest trades in the world have that. So that means, but here, here's what I want to, um, uh, yeah, both Destiny and Sealy, it, it, that's, that's an amazing conversation to have, of course. Um, like the, imagine this, the, the, here comes the cool part. And this is why journaling is so important. So if you are not profitable and you don't have a journal, you know what to do. Just do it. Open a Word document, screenshot your trades, tell a little story why you took the trade and what resulted in it before and after. Just make a document, make a living document. But here's the cool part. You, de you develop an edge. So you know, after journaling some trades, you know, okay, I've taken 20 trades or 10 trades and my strike rate is 40%. That means to hit the, that 40% uh, strike rate, Yes, you need to win four, but also you must lose six. You must lose six. Otherwise, you don't have the 40. And I think that's very nice and humbling to think about. So to hit your edge of 40%, you need, you must lose six times. Otherwise, you don't have an edge of 40%. Of course, losing less is better. But if you know my edge is 40%, I am striving for 40%. That you need to lose that six, six trades. So Destiny, for example, if you see your A setup, and you know backtesting or from your own journal, 40% of the times it's good and I profitable with that. Take the trade and lose. Go lose. Just lose it six times in a row, 10 times in a row, 20 times in a row. Maybe 20 times in a row you, you need to look at your, your execution, but um, go lose. Change the way you look at losing. You have an edge, it's 40%, you need to lose six. Do it and be proud of the loss. You need to be proud of executing your edge and taking that loss with proud because you need to have that. And the, the funny part about trading is um, you get scared in two ways. The first uh, fear is when you take a trade and it goes into drawdown. So it, it, it moves towards your stop loss. That's your first kind of fear, like shit, I'm going to lose, it's going to my stop loss. It's very uncomfortable. But there's another kind of fear and that's the one that the trade goes into profit, but it's not there yet. Very uncomfortable because maybe your trade's already uh, like, I don't know, 60% 6, towards your TP or it's almost at TP. And it, and, and it retraces. Shit, your, your, your profits are on the line. Are you going to lose the profits? So you have two types of fear in a trade. It's the fear of, of losing itself, losing this, going to the stop loss, but also losing the paper profits, the unrealized gains, the unrealized profits. And the only way to get over that fear is to just go fucking lose. Do it, and that's and, and that's. I should make another section in the school group with losing trades. I lose a lot. That doesn't make you a bad trader. It makes you a good trader. And 
if you go on Twitter, I think that's what you'll find me as well. Every account only post wins. So if I'm going to open my Twitter account right now, and I'm going to scroll through my feed, I see the most amazing trades, amazing trades. The 20 Rs, the, the perfect market maker buy models, the external to, the external, to end, external range liquidity. But I still need to see an account that is losing his five trades in a row loss, his losing streaks. Hey guys, look at this, I took another loss. You don't get, that. that's, that's the, the, the difficult part about the industry, you don't get likes and follows by posting losing trades, it's not cool. You need to be the cool kid on the block. <laughs> I see what you're doing here, Sam. So don't be discouraged if you're losing and you're going your Twitter, you see only losing trades or, or excuse me, you see only winning trades. Those guys lose as well. So you are, you're, you're, you're cool. Uh, Destiny says my strike rate is 50%, but the major problem is that I can leave my trade to get full stop. My winner gets shadowed by my losses. Uh, what is your what are you aiming for? Like on for example, if you look at RR, like one to two, one to three. Just hold your winners to TP one to two. Okay. They need a 50% strike rate to be profitable. Hold your trace to TP and to, to SL and just let your edge play out. And if you know your strike rate is not 50%, you don't need to shoot for one to two. Or you need to maybe look at, okay, how can I trade a one to two? And for example, use a bigger stop loss, use a bigger TP, like bigger trades to let your stop loss get hit less time. Okay, and Q is approaching the uh, the daily busy, so we could get a perhaps a uh, setup live here before the open in a few minutes. So remember, accumulation, manipulation, distribution, and let's see what we get right now. Let's take a look at ES as well. Yes, almost at the daily busy. And after that, I think I logged into, I'm going to look into, I'm using Apex Trader as well, like the future broker just to, to check them out.
Uh, Michael asked, do you move your stop loss to break even when you get the itch to close your trades? Or think about making partials? Uh, I did that. And uh, my mentor told me, um, like, like I, I get mentally, like, that person unstable, but I was like a little nervous when I was in a trade. And then my mentor said to me, yo, just let it go to your stop loss or your, to, your t to your TP. Don't take partials. Don't move your stop loss to break even. And he said, the only, the only time you need to put your stop loss to break even is when your trade is around 80% already to take profit. Like almost, almost. Then it's, then it's okay. But then without that, just let it go. And that rule, Michael, is uh, different for for everyone. Uh, I take some bigger trades right now, so I stop scalping. All right, opening in four minutes. Well, NCD Cat is still chilling. But let's focus on the indices for potential setup. Cool, right? That exactly at the open. And Q and ES do that a lot. Exactly at the New York Open, they're going to hit it hit a higher time frame uh, for the array. And what I'm looking for to enter a setup right now on the indices is an SMT. So that means usually they move in tandem. So now we are trading upwards. And at some time, you're going down, of course. But one of the two shouldn't follow the other. So for example, here, it's the first leg up. And then one of them fails to make a higher high. So here, we make a higher high. And here, we don't. Called an s &T. And in the indices, that's it's very nice confidence to have. It indicates possible reversal. So that's why where I'm waiting for for a potential short. If it doesn't happen, I'm just I'm staying flat. I don't think. Uh, Ahmad Mansour, you said I have a good strategy to always come back to uh, to plus one percent. Okay, sounds interesting. 
are you care to share that? Also share it in the school group. Sure, mate. You can hear me. Hi. All right, waiting and waiting. Uh, no, I'm, I cannot hear you, so. Um... Uh, Sergi wants three risk to reward. Oh, yeah, that, that sounds like an interesting one. Uh, it's cool. It would be open that you can share that in the training camp as well. Perhaps people uh, would like to see that. Okay, it's the market open, so expect some volatility at the open. Still waiting for the daily CB to hit. And just waiting for that S and on the indices for a for a setup. Yeah, I'm not, I understand that's kind of complicated. Uh, I think it's it's um, it's kind of a, uh, I don't know if you know that betting system, it's called Martingale. That's basically to double down after every loss until you get a win. Uh, it, it's of course not the same, but I, I, I have feeling kind of vibes, like Martingale uh, vibes. But hey, if it works for you, amazing, man. And uh, share it with the group. DXY is still consolidating. I think we'll go lower.
and let's take a look at GVP CAD. So like I said, I think we're going to take out some sellers before a potential move to take out all these highs. There's money resting here. But the market isn't going to give you that money for free. It wants to take out as many people as possible before making that move. So that's why I think we're going to take out some sellers. Let's straight into this four hour for value again and let's see what happens. I think this is low resist liquidity. I think we can go through it. The only thing is we are inside a daily city. Cheap white bears are going up. When you're trading, this kind of price action, this range is compared to, let's say, last few days, kind of slow. That's okay. You don't, you're not executing or not anticipating big trades. That's fine. Perhaps it's going after ten, or perhaps in a few minutes. But for now, uh, nothing cool is happening. Gold is going up. Yeah, that's not very surprising. Yeah. Yeah, gold is so hyper bullish. I wouldn't short gold anytime. I won't. I'm not trading it, but if I would trade it, let's see if Bitcoin joins it. No. Bitcoin at 62 is kind of low. I think it was very high a few days ago. It was actually, it was at 73. Interesting, interesting. Right, DXY is on the move. No, that's, that's not true, but perhaps it is in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Ahmad, for sharing the screenshot of your strategy in the, uh, in the trading camp. That's amazing.
Yeah, it should be good. Should be good. I'm uh, curious if maybe some other people from the group are resonating with it. Oh, nice. You you even have a uh, Excel sheet with it. Can you also attach an Excel sheet, perhaps? People can play around with the numbers if their account balance is, for example, different. Very cool. Very cool. I love that. Yeah, I got you, Amada. I got you. Yeah, perhaps um, what you can do is create a Loom video. I know if you know Loom, you can uh, like create a cool video. That that's where I use the uh, Wiki Outlooks on. And otherwise, we can do a uh, maybe tomorrow during the live stream. Uh, we can do a live demonstration if you would uh, be open for that. But I, from from personal experience, Loom is very nice. Think we need to be patient like we had of course we had a 100 pip like some kind of move coming up but i think structure is is going to be nice like what you want to see in a cell model is it's the buy side of the curve for risk consolidation having that buy side of the curve with failure swings and then sell side of the curve starts taking out this is what you want to see. And if you look, if you compare this with the current price action of NQ, we are currently inside this stage. So I think we can get one move up inside the daily disease, CBs, excuse me, and then see lower prices. And if we don't, that's fine. I just don't take a trade or take a loss, but That's what I'm seeing. Like just before the daily busy, we're not going to see a big move down. It will be strange. And what will be very nice if we can see a move towards the daily busy right here on the XY. So let's zoom in a bit. Because tomorrow we have a red folder. So it would be very nice if we can trade maybe today or early tomorrow to here. And then that news, the red folder, can push us up there. That would be very nice. Because you had two red folders for USD. It was on Monday, this green candle. And the next is on uh, Thursday, tomorrow. We have, uh, what is it? I think, I think not a very big one. It was... Unemployment claims, oh, it's, it's okay. Could give some nice volatility. It's during the live stream. So excited for that one. And that means short term, I would say higher prices for the uh, USD pairs towards their own respective daily CPs here. Okay, back to an indices.
9.45, we should see some volatility very soon. There's not volatility, it's like a uh, 50, pay, 50 points move, that's not very big, based on the average daily range. All right, any other questions? Looking at pairs, the current movements of some pairs, we can analyze them together. Can have a look at the US 30? Yeah, sure. Let's go to YM. Okay, let's look at the monthly. We are close to the daily. Like, YM is more bearish than the other one. Monthly, you have the week. Weekly, we don't have any. We're creating a city. I think for YM, this low is on the cards. Short term. This is what I'm seeing for YM. This low coming up. Uh, Yop, you mentioned it came off a one hour FEG. What do you mean? Which pair? Oh, we just touch the four hour busy on NCD cap. Let's see if we can see high prices. I think it's going to have some easy move above these highs because these are all filler swings. That will be amazing. Okay, let's let's get that push up for uh, for NQ.
could get an S and T on the lows here. It's okay if you don't took a trade in this price action. It's okay. Okay, let's see what we have right now. Let's see if we're going to create this. Let me log into my trade of fate. Hold on. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I'm going to log into my trade of fate. Let's check if we can get a little scalp here. So one, two, three. Stop loss will be. Let me share again. Seventy eight six six. All right, let's do one contract. And let's see first trade on the trade of fate account. This is a small scalp on a uh, Apex Trader account. Actually, the first time I'm doing this via Trading View, so let's, let's see how this works. <laughs> I think we can we can trade towards the uh, the highs there. So when price trades above. 9, 17, 9, 42. I'm going to trail my stop loss to the swing low, just like you've learned in the 2024 mentorship, the trading stop loss video.
So why I took the trade, we have clear buy side liquidity and we have an SMT on the lows. That's the reason of taking. Of course, we have some liquidity resting down here as well, but I'm willing to risk it. We are the New York Open. We just had manipulation lag and I think we're going to distribute higher. That's my two cents on this trade. Let's see what DXY is doing. DXY is still chilling. Now it's going into our drawdown. And we're just chilling. And 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 the thing is, like trading like this, you were scalping, so you're going to lose a lot more. So if I lose this trade, that's cool. And then I'm flat for uh, on this account. And the bigger trade, the one I'm going to take on the uh, Nifana accounts, I'm going to take from the city to the downside. And S&T is holding right now, so that's a good sign. The only thing what could stop this trade is we trading into this value gap here, but yeah, who cares? Then just take the loss and and go on with life. So it's almost the open, the new four hour candles opening in 30 seconds. So it could give some uh, some volatility. See on DXY, DXY is, <laughs> DXY is not having a very nice day right now. Still inside this day's range. Take a quick look at NCD cat. See cat is just chilling in the value gap there. Okay, three seconds and we have a new candle coming up. All right, it's going into drawdown again. That's kind of choppy. So I think I'm going to see my stop loss in a few uh, few seconds. Yeah, S&T is not there. Oh, it is still, but 
Yeah, it's going to be a high chance stop loss right here. Take a look at some other pairs. TXY is going up. That's not good for NQ as inverse correlated. So I think we will see the um, the run towards the daily busy to uh, at another time. Let's move up right now. And just to be clear, guys, this is scalping. So a higher losing rate, also faster in and out. So you get your stop loss faster, you get your TP faster. I like to take the bigger trades, just like I shared, for example, the GBP cat trade from uh, a few days ago. You're long in the trade, your stop loss gets longer to hit. And we are almost out. Yeah, we're out. Okay, well, stop loss. That's fine. And NQ will go down. So the reason I didn't short yet was because the daily CV is still open, but NQ has, or the indices have other plans. And that's fine. Uh, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. The uh, the stops were very tight, very tight. I agree. This one, definitely. But actually, I wanted to see a quicker move towards the daily busy, anyways. So that's why I will add a tight stop loss. But yes, of course, this in if it went lower, it wasn't this uh, this range. And the thing is, because I was aiming for an SMT on the lows right here. I was like, okay, when we are hitting this for value gap, then it will also, the SMT will be broken here. So that's why I took the uh, small stop loss. And we talked about losing earlier. And like, I know scalping has a, uh, it's not the highest win rate. So for example, scalping rate is, uh, I don't know, 50%. That means today, one of the five losses off the edge is hit. And that's cool. Journal it. Back to the next one. And it was the first time trading on uh, Apex Trader Funding. So it was nice uh, on TraderFA to check out how it works. Very nice. Just via trading view, just buying and selling. I like that. Yeah, and looking at the current price action, guys, uh, I don't think I'm going to I'm going to do one more round to see if there's anything nice. And otherwise, I'm going to call the day for the stream. So your USD is kind of chopping because TSY is chopping. Canadian pairs are also not doing much. Look, everything is kind of consolidating. G 
TPY pairs are going up. Because I think, yeah, we are going lower for, uh, for yen. It's gold already on the moon. No, gold's also consolidating. So this is a boring day, guys. Uh, I can't make it any better. I would love to have that big range days and to catch the big moves and just chilling with you guys. Uh, but not today. So um, before we move out, are there any questions? Perhaps about the new school group, about some trades. Maybe you want some review on some trades or want to talk about other things. Let me know in the chat. And if there's no other questions, I'm going to uh, to close out the stream. Uh, tomorrow again, 8.30, we're going to do this daily. Uh, we have a red fold on 8.30. So perhaps I'll be live inside the uh, this meeting, uh, perhaps five minutes before 8.30. So feel free to join or join a waiting list in the uh, Google Meet. And uh, yeah, I don't see any questions. Otherwise, just ask them in the trading camp. I'll be there. Lots of other amazing trades in the group who can also help you out. Uh, do I consider the news, uh, Steve asked? Yes, I do. You should let news be your roadmap. So red folder means volatility. And that's nice because you want volatility. You want a powerful move. So yes, I do consider the news. I don't trade before CPI, FOMC, and NFP. Those three, I don't trade before that. Uh, and that's mostly because you have a two-sided move. So both buy side and sell side got taken out with the big three. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my take on news. Uh, in the 2024 mentorship, I'm going to make a whole dedicated section about news as well, how news support work. Uh, you don't need to read them. So don't be the guy that's going to read those news reports. That, that's crazy. <laughs> you don't need that to become uh, profitable. But uh, yeah. All right, guys. Um, good session. Uh, yeah, we took a scalp loss on NQ. That is fine. First time on, on Apex Trader funding. Very nice. Uh, yeah, I should, <laughs> I should have put my stop loss below the value gap. Uh, but yeah, uh, you win some, you lose some. So uh, that's OK. All right, guys. Have an amazing uh, rest of your day. Happy trading, and I will see you tomorrow, 8.30. Bye-bye.